edition of Rambling Rides with Amber. This has been a lot of fun for me. This, this segment gives me an opportunity to be able to uh, catch everyone up on all the things that are happening in my life when I don't typically have time to sit down and make a post. Uh, I'm usually always driving, so <laughs> this is a great opportunity for me just to make use of that time. And You know, usually I would call friends and family members and catch up with them, which I still do, don't worry. Um, but it's just as important for me to get you guys all caught up because there's a lot going on here. And um, yeah, so I'm headed right now to pick up some used cabinets that I found online that I'm going to use in my tack room uh, in the new barn and trying to do things as, as um, inexpensive as possible, but also I really enjoy finding used materials because as we know, we live in a world that is very high consumption and new, new, new. So whenever I can, I like to repurpose something. So hopefully these work out. Um, and if not, I know I'll find a space for them somewhere in the shop. But uh, lots going on, lots of, of new things that have happened this year. You know, we moved and we have adopted some new animals and everything that's happening that I'm trying to keep you guys caught up on. But I have to say this summer was very, very busy, busier than I expected. And so there was a lot of things that I just either not forgot to update everyone on, but just didn't have the time to make a nice story out of it. So I just said, I will do it when I have time. Um, so many of you have commented on the sorrel horse that we've seen. We saw uh, him in some pictures with my friend Katie riding him, and he's been around for actually a couple years. He belonged to a friend of Sean's, and when we moved everything over, Sean decided, well, I've been riding this horse a lot. I rope off him. I really like him. So we decided to buy him. So his name's Hippie, and uh, he belongs to Sean. And then there's another new guy on the farm as well, other than that colt. There's a roan horse. He's a three-year-old that uh, we've named Slider. And he was raised by good friends of ours. And all of their yearlings stayed with us. They boarded with us in a big pasture that we had um, as one and two-year-olds. So I got to know them all pretty well. I mean, we, didn't, we weren't very hands-on with them, but um, I really liked this, this little roan horse. And of course he was for sale so Sean and I talked about it and we decided to keep him um, so we're not boarding those horses anymore but he stayed with us and he is a three-year-old roan quarter horse that Sean hopes will be his future heel horse future rope horse future whatever so we're not putting any pressure on him but you may have seen him in some of my videos I've been riding him on the trails quite a bit just to get him used to stuff he's a really nice little horse um, still pretty green so just taking it easy I, you know I don't like to rush it when they're young just get him exposed to lots but he's very quiet um, very easy to be around and gets along well with everyone so he fit right in so um, I'm gonna post these new horses on the website at some point as well because I know that lots of you love to go through and look at the animal bios and it kind of helps explain explain about some of the critters that we have on the farm that I might not necessarily have time to, to write about but I will get their bios up for sure. So that's Hippie and Slider. Um, talking about the new colt that we do have to find a name for. Um, I I just want to say, I want to clear up a misconception because I think when I say wild colt, a lot of people assume that he's wild in behavior. That is not the case. Um, I just say wild colt because he's from the wild. He was a wild horse born in the wild, so that's why I call him the wild colt. But it's quite the opposite of wild because I know many of you were giving me some um, good positive tips on how to tame and handle and halter break. He is overly tame, overly friendly, overly halter broke. Those are actually all the things that I'm avoiding right now. Uh, just from my own past experience and experience working with others, my own belief is not to touch young colts and fillies at all. Um, so many people, they're so cute and they want to get in there and they want to scratch them all over and they want to pet them. I like to just keep that gentle respect for that animal and let them understand that they are a horse, they are not a human, and 
just kind of understand the herd dynamics and if it's up to me I don't want to even halt or break them until they're over a year um, I just find that it, it really helps them understand their fundamentals of what they are who they are and too many horses become so social right off the bat that they just want to push in your space they don't understand how big they're gonna grow and that's the thing too is is when um, we're working with a, a really young colt and this this horse that I have is only three months old and so he's quite small still and he thinks that when he pushes on you that it's okay because at this point he's not huge so it's not making a huge impact but the bigger he gets and the older he gets this could really seriously hurt someone and injure someone so that's one of the reasons why I just like to let a horse grow up a bit before I really start putting the time and energy and work into them um, that was one thing I, I really noticed with this slider horse that I talked about is they don't they don't do any training with their horses work with them at all um, right off the bat they just let them grow up with their moms and just in the herd they do their own thing and then when they wean them at about six months they halter break briefly and then just turn them out for the winter with babies their own age and size that they can play with and then as two-year-olds they start to work with them a little bit more um, and I just I just noticed a huge level of respect between these horses and the people working with them and they kind of they just understood the herd dynamic because they had been allowed to just be a horse and um, there's really there's something to that so that's that's where I come from and like I said there's so many different ways to do it and it doesn't make my way right at all it just means that this is what's worked for me and I think you have to be adaptable when working with horses to figure out what works best for that specific horse with its background with its um, own personality and, and character traits and there's no one solution or one size fits all I mean you have to be when working with any animals you have to be willing to kind of customize your approach to how that animal reacts and responds to it um, so with that being said I have tried to be completely hands-off with this little wild colt um, and just let him figure out that he's actually a horse not a human he'd only seen humans for the first two months of his life other than the first couple weeks he was with his herd originally so he just thinks he's a human and he doesn't really know how to socialize with other horses right now which is my big thing so I'm, I'm just ignoring him at this point you know I give him his his feed and I just do that in a bucket I don't bottle feed him I don't do anything where I'm super close with him just from the other side of the fence I pour his his food into his bucket and that also includes his milk replacer because he's still not weaned yet from milk and I don't even touch him don't even really look at him because I want him to start to bond with the other horses I don't want him to imprint on me um, again that's just my own belief because of how pushy and in your space he is um, that's that's of what I'm doing with him right now so we'll see how that goes and again I, I might change my uh, approach in a few months once he starts to realize his boundaries and uh, respect humans a little bit more um, but at this point I think he just needs to learn how to be a member of the herd and to let the other horses the bigger horses need to push him around a little bit um, just like a spoiled little toddler you know he needs to know that you can't be stepping out of line there's a herd structure here and if you want to be a member of this herd then you need to follow it and uh, another important thing will be to get him gelded in the spring um, I like to I like to geld when horses are about a year old um, again everybody has a different idea of that and if you don't know what geld means it's castration so we castrate all male horses that aren't going to be intended for breeding purposes it just takes the edge off a bit, um, chills them out a little, and for this little guy, that's going to be a must right away. Um, also, with the Woes Society, the Wild Horses of Alberta Society, they uh, require that all of their horses are not to be bred, so it is a requirement as well that he gets gelded as soon as possible. 
Uh, so that will be done and that should help a little bit too. But this is kind of a, a long-term project, so to speak. So this isn't just a, okay, I'm going to have him for a few months and then he's going to find a great home because I believe that it's going to take a couple years before he'll really be ready to to go to a new home and to be adopted out and to be known to be a safe horse. Um, so that's kind of the, the goal in the end of this is I would never want to adopt a horse out and then find out that they're, they have aggression issues or um, they're just, they're not going to work out for a family. So that's kind of my goal is to make sure that this horse and any horses that are going to be rehomed are ready. And I will for sure bring in some expertise uh, as he becomes a two-year-old because I'm not a horse trainer, unlike many believe Amy Fleming on television. I am not a horse trainer. I don't do this for a living. I understand horses, I think, a great deal, and I enjoy working with them. But when it comes to really putting the fun fundamentals on a horse, you really want to make sure you know what you're doing because that horse could live to be 30, 35 years old, and if you don't have the fundamentals put in place early on, you'll really notice it affect the life of that horse and the lifestyle because either people will be afraid of it or it'll be unmanageable and they won't want to be around it. And really, when it comes down to that, then what kind of life does that horse have? So that's where I'm at is I just want to make sure that he has a really solid start, uh, a good beginning on him. And uh, hopefully, you know, all the incredible people that I have um, giving me some insight and, uh, and information on orphan foals especially, because I've, I've been around lots of colts and I've worked with colts, but orphans are a whole new thing because they don't have mama there to keep them in line. And uh, a horse is a big creature, so it's hard for us to be able to mimic that mothering instinct that horses do so well. So with all that being said, I'm gonna wrap this up and I just wanna say thank you for coming on the journey with me again. And I enjoy, I enjoy this, I wanna say collaboration, but it's, I know that right now this is a one-sided video, but from the comments and the feedback I'm getting from everyone, um, whether you know horses or not, and I know a lot of people have said they're learning lots about horses from these videos and from my posts, so um, that's, that's really cool for me because if I can open up the world of horses to those who have never been around them, um, it doesn't mean you have to go out and get a horse, but if you can be inspired to just learn more about these incredible animals, then, then I guess I'm happy. I've done my job. So <laughs> take care everyone and uh, don't forget the new season of Heartland is out every Sunday at 7 on CBC.